Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Praise God. Thank God for another another opportunity the Lord has given me to come and share with you once again the precious words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is truly worthy to be praised. I'm Pastor James A. Dansby. Praise God. Coming to you from Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God. Declared once again that Jesus Christ Praise God, on this Monday, on this 29th day of November, and praise God, not only today, but praise God, tomorrow and forever, Jesus is the answer to all of our problems. Praise God, if we just trust him, put our trust in the Lord with all our hearts, the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Praise God, well, I do have a word, I have a word from the Lord, just for you again today. And this is part four, our closing uh, message in this series here that we've been on for the last couple of weeks. Praise God. And we're looking again at uh, three books of the Bible, one verse after each book. And I do encourage you to copy them down. Uh, praise God. Uh, either follow me in your Bible today as we close out this series. Praise God. Leviticus eleven forty four, Hebrews 12 and 14. 1 Peter 1 and 16. Praise God. Uh, Leviticus 11, 44 reads, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore, he says, sanctify yourselves and be ye holy, the Lord says, for I am holy. And then if we look at uh, Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, 14, Paul uh, who we pre presume to be Paul that wrote this great book, uh, he says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man, no man shall see the Lord. And then first Peter, let's listen to Peter as he refers back to what Moses spoke through inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Leviticus 11.44. Peter refers back to that in first Peter 1.16. And he says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father, we bless you today. Lord, I thank you for this another opportunity, Lord, you've given me to share your word today. I pray, Father God, by your spirit, you'll speak through me, Lord, that the anointing might be upon me as well as the hearers today. And Lord God, we know that your word will not return void. Amen. And it will accomplish that which you have sent it for today. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, in this part four, this closing uh, volume of this series, uh, our subject, once again, Christ says, be holy. Christ says, be holy. Praise God. And from the beginning of time, praise God, God chose him a people to represent himself from the beginning, uh, and to represent himself to the rest of the people that were in the world. And these people were called Israelites. They called Israelites, they were called Jews. Amen. And God gave them 10 moral laws, or we call them commandments, praise God, that uh, they were to live by themselves as an example uh, to others and also to teach others through their examples, and through their words that he had given them. And now uh, the Lord had them to realize that uh, this moral law is to be issued for the good of society. Amen. And all mankind, praise God, are great catalysts and are great instruments to help us to have a peaceful and, uh, you know, a loving society. That's what God had them to understand that. And as we know now, as we know, Israel failed miserably in this mission. I mean, this mission to take, to be an example to the people and take those 10 moral laws to the people. Amen. But now those 10 moral laws were in the very, they were in the very image of our, our holy God, the holy God that we serve. These 10 moral laws represented the very image of our holy God. Praise God, the God of creation, the God that created us. And if man, if man did not embrace these moral laws, God had man to know that uh, his uh, uh, very existence in the world, praise God, would be filled with chaos and confusion. And praise God, that's what we got today. Amen. As it was said, so it is today. Because we have not embraced God's moral laws, 
Therefore, we have chaos, we have confusion, we have it in our homes, we have it in our job, on our jobs, we have it in the world, we have it everywhere because we refuse to embrace God's moral laws. But now, again, let's go back to, from the beginning. Before the foundation of the world, God in Christ chose him a people to represent Christ, praise God, in holiness. Hmm? And by way of those same 10 moral laws, uh, the very image of God was to be projected once again. Praise God, the very image of God. But first now, Christ himself had to come down. He would. He came down to earth, praise God, in a body. And he, what did he do when he came here? He perfectly obeyed the 10 moral laws laws. He perfectly obeyed every one of God's commandments. Amen. Along with the fact that he took the penalty that was ours, which was death. He died because that was the penalty that was placed upon us. But now the thing we're concerned about here today is that he perfectly kept those moral laws, perfectly obeyed them. Praise God. Then he empowered his chosen people, talking about his chosen people uh, to do the same. Praise God. To demonstrate to the rest of the world again, his holiness, praise God, which is being, praise God, made available right now, every day to whosoever will, the Bible said, let him come. God gave these 10 moral laws again to another people called the church, called the church, the Christians, the believers, the same ones he gave to Israel. They dropped the ball. He gave it to Christ's people called the church. His representatives. That's what we are. We're representatives of Christ here. Praise God. We're supposed to be representatives of his holiness, his morality. Praise God. Even in, even in this dark world. And I admit that it's dark. We live in a dark world today, but he empowered us. When Christ saved us, saved me, he gave me power. Praise God, to live a life that would glorify him and reflect the holiness and the morality of himself. Praise God. But now, if you are a Christian, though, if you are a Christian, uh, 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 then, uh, praise God, if you're born again of the Spirit of God, then you have been sanctified. As I said in our last message, you've been sanctified and you've been set apart, but now you are being sanctified each and every day as we live in this life. And, and, and the, pattern, uh, the pattern and the mold for our sanctification is the holiness of Jesus Christ. Yes, we are every day. Every day and every hour we're being conformed, the Bible says, into the holy moral image of of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every day, this hour, as I speak to you right now, praise God, I'm being, praise God, conformed into his very image. Amen. But now, again, as Christians, now, we're chosen, right? We're chosen. We're chosen and we're called to imitate his holiness. Yes, that's right. By way of what? Uh, of sanctification, being set apart. By way of a, a living a lifestyle that's separated from sin. By living a lifestyle, praise God, that uh, uh, conforms to his moral law. We've been chosen for that purpose. Every believer, you, if you are a true believer, you've been chosen for, to, to glorify him by being conforming, to he conform to his image. Praise God, his moral image and holiness. Praise God. But now, in Romans 8, 29, if you look there, let's see, can we find it there? Romans 8, 29, Romans 8, 29, it says here, for whom he did foreknow, foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image hmm, of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. He foreknew us from the foundation of the world. He foreknew me. He knew me before I was even uh, conformed in my mother's womb. For whom he foreknew, he predestined. He predetermined that I would be in the family of God. I am a child of God because I was predetermined before the world was even made. But he said now to be conformed to his image. That's what we've been foreknown and predestined to be conformed to his image. But now if you look at 2 Corinthians and copy down now, if you can't keep up with me, I have a tendency to, to run a little fast. My wife says I'm just fast. I'm just fast all the time, you know. But now 2 Corinthians 3.18, 3.18, 
It says there, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, a glass, a mirror, could be a mirror, you know, same thing as a mirror, the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. See, now, believing in Christ, believing in Christ, and that's what we, uh, as true believers, that's what we've done, right? Right? We're believing in Christ as he is revealed in the Bible, hmm? which Paul refers to the Bible as being the glass here, or a mirror, mirror through which we, we look into the mirror, we look into the Word of God, and as we look into the mirror, praise God, we see him, we see Christ through the eyes of faith, we look at Christ, and the glory of God is revealed in us and to us hmm? by the Spirit. He said, by the Spirit of the Lord. That's what he says in that uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 18. By the Spirit of the Lord, he changes us. Who changes us? He transforms us. Praise God. He sanctifies us into that same holy image of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. From, and then, he, then he adds out from glory to glory. We go from glory to glory. Praise God. And, and, and thus we can, we can see the importance here of us reading God's word. He says the mirror, right? We look into the mirror. And if we look into that mirror, we're changed. So we need to keep our head in the word of God. It's important. Amen. The Bible says study it to show yourself approved up to God, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God. So as I study God's word, the more I study God's word, praise God, I'm being transformed. Praise God. If you don't study God's word, how can you expect to be go through the transformation? Huh? Then Paul said, it's the glass. It's the mirror by which we look into. And as we look into it, praise God, we're changed into his great image. But now, believing in Christ now, believe, believers in Christ, believers in Christ, all believers in Christ are called to be models hmm, of his holiness. We're called to be models of his holiness. And then keepers of his moral laws. Yes. Which are opposite the very opposite of living in sin. Praise God and indulging in the flesh. It's the opposite of that. Amen. See, the world we live in today, it, it the world we live in today hates God's moral laws. Yeah. They hate. The world hates God's moral laws. Matter of fact, the world hates all laws. As you know today, all laws, all restrictions, all borders that are placed upon them, they hate them. Hmm? And as far as the world and our, praise God, government officials are concerned, praise God, stealing one of the moral laws that we are supposed to adhere to. But according to this government today, stealing, looting stores and tearing people's business up, it's okay. It's okay. That's what they say. Killing babies in abortion. Oh, it's okay. Hmm. Killing in Chicago every week, every day. Hundreds and hundreds of people losing their life, but that's okay because that black on black, you know, we can't use that as a political platform to do our thing. Hmm? Adultery, fornication, this world that they say, oh, that's okay. Hmm? Then there are all these moral laws that God had given us to have a peaceful society. The laws say today, the, the government say today, it's okay. And the people, and they lied and cheating, they say, praise God, the Bible says that's not good. But we say, it's okay. Hmm? Church folks, even church folks. We got church folks siding with these people that want to push away. God's holy word, God's holy moral laws that Christ came and kept so beautifully and wonderfully that we might be saved. Want to get rid of them, don't you? Yes, oh, you surely do. Hmm? They said they don't even need the police no more. We don't need no police. That problem is the Bible tells me that authorities that be are ordained of God. God ordained the police. But now the, the government said we don't need the police anymore. Huh? Looking over our backs and all that, we need to defund. We got to defund this police, and eventually we just need to get rid of them. See, but the real problem here is not that the people of uh, this world hate all the things that are good. It's not just that. Hmm? All that is like God and just not like that. But they just hate God, period. Hmm? The people in this world 
And a lot of you church people, you have joined in with them. And if you're feeling a little hot on the collar right now, uh, maybe you ought to say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. But church folks, you join in with these crusades to get rid of God's authority and to just let's have a, a, a dark city shootout. Let's no laws. Praise God. Now, Isaiah 520, and most of you know that. Most of you know it. <laughs> the Bible said, woe unto them that call good evil. Call good uh, evil good, that is, and good evil. Huh? Those that uh, put darkness for light, it says, and light for darkness, put bitterness for sweet and sweet for bitterness. That's the society we live in today. Hmm? And they have rejected God's word. Praise God. They don't flip the, flip the script, the old boys say. Hey, just don't turn it all the way around. Isaiah, uh, well, 1 Samuel 8, let's look at that. Samuel, Samuel was feeling quite bad and because, uh, praise God, the people turn against Samuel. And uh, 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 1 Samuel 8, 7, copy down now if you can't keep up with me now. Uh, 1 Samuel 8, 7, it says there, and the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. They want a king. Okay, God, listen to them, huh? For they have not rejected thee, Samuel. Mm -hmm. You ain't done nothing to these people. They hadn't rejected you, but they have rejected me. They have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Mm -hmm. Same thing today, isn't it? Huh? We got people today in this world. You see why Jesus said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. He's not talking about the trees. He's not talking about the, uh, the, the sky and all that. He's talking about the system. He talking about a rotten system that a lot of you people that say you're church folks and you love the Lord, but you're right there with them though. So you're rejecting God too, but you expect to be blessed, don't you? Oh yes, blessing, blessing, blessings. Oh yes. But now it, it, it's the same today. The people are chanting no God, no God, no God, no moral laws. We don't want no moral law. We don't want no fences. We don't want no restrictions on us. We all don't want no borders. We don't want no Christianity. Let sin reign, they say. We want sin to reign. We want to do whatever we want to do. And that's what they're doing today. Hmm? It's the Antichrist spirit that's loose. It's been here. Uh, Paul said it was during his time. It was very active, but now uh, kind of foot loose and fancy free right now. huh? That means crime, the coming of Christ is getting closer and closer. When you see sin set in the temple where it ought not to be at, the abomination of desolation is what the Bible called it. And that's what we have today. So now, my question uh, to you, to many of you, is why, why is there so little preaching about sin in our poor pits today? Why is there so little preaching about keeping moral laws and being moral people since Christ came to show us that we could be moral people with the help and power of the Holy Spirit? There's so little uplifting, upholding of God's moral laws in the world and in the church. Praise God. Jesus kept them. He kept them perfectly. Yeah, in order to uh, uh, acquire for us a release from the bondage of sin. He kept them because, now, that's why I'm free today. That's why I'm free, because he kept them, and praise God, by faith. It has been uh, 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 given to me that same victory is my victory today. Oh, praise God, I just love that. Praise God. See, sin had us in prison. It had me in prison. Now, you may, you may be a goody-goody two-shoes yourself, but I was imprisoned by sin before God saved me. And it's because the world don't want to hear this kind of preaching, preaching against sin. The world don't want to hear it. Hmm? Praise God. <laughs> Just like that mixed multitude. You remember when uh, the Egyptians came out of Egypt? I mean, the uh, Israelites came out of Egypt. Uh, the Bible said a mixed multitude came with them. Hmm? Believers, unbelievers. Uh, and we got the same people in the church today. Remember now, the people that fought Christ the most during his walk on earth was church folks. Uh, and I know a lot of you church folks, you be hot with me. Praise God. I know you're hot because I tell you the truth. Praise God. I, I try to say it in love, but, you know, I I'm, I'm, guess I'm not the loveliest person in the world, but I try my best to say it in love. Amen. There's a mixed multitude in the church today. Hmm? And can we really, can you really preach the gospel of Jesus Christ today, preachers? Uh, can you really preach it in a world that's on its way to hell, or in, a, in a world that's full of sin? Can you preach it today and don't mention nothing about sin? Can you do that? Well, Brother well, Osteen said, well, the Lord didn't tell me to say nothing like that. Okay, brother. Okay. Can we do it? Can we do it? Don't mention sin at all. 
Praise God. That's in our face today. They, 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 they got they rubbing it in our face today. Daring us to speak against homosexuality. Daring us to speak against lesbianism, transgenderism, and, and abortions, and, 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 and this sexual revolution that's in the world. This hate indoctrination of our children in our schools today. They daring us to say anything about it. No, yeah, shut up, church folks. Hmm? And most of the church folks shut up. But now I'm not to be shut up, though. I, I guess, you know, I guess I'm a renegade just like the Lord. He was a renegade. He went against that system. And I stand against it because the system is against God. As the servants of the Lord, we got to, we must not and cannot keep quiet. You can't do it, brothers. Huh? Regardless. Praise God. Regardless. 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 Regardless of what the world says, or what the world do today. We cannot, we cannot keep quiet. Hallelujah. Regardless of what these hired servants are saying today, and I know they're saying what the people want to hear, with those itching ears that the Bible talks about, they're saying those very things they want to hear. But Christ says to us, be holy. And this means that we are to comply, praise God, with the moral laws of God, which produces peaceful lives for all of us. When we comply with God's moral law and teach them, praise God, that gives us a chance of having a peaceful existence, a peaceful life in this world today. Praise God. That's what the Bible means when uh, Hebrews 12, uh, 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. No man, no man shall see the Lord. That's what the scripture says. See, now, remember now that Jesus uh, uh, reduced the moral laws, the Ten Commandments, to two. He kind of pared them down to two, right? Which is loving God, of course, praise God, and then also loving our neighbors. Now, if we do all that, we wouldn't have this confusion today, amen, that we have in throughout our world. Is that, am I right about that? Praise God. Obeying them. Loving God, loving your neighbor. Now, listen to what Paul says about God's moral law there in Romans 7, 12. Romans 7, 12. Listen to what Paul says. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and just, and good. Hmm? Listen, listen to it again now. Romans 7, 12. Paul said, the law is holy. The commandment is holy. He's talking about God's moral laws now. They are just, and they are good. It mean, what did it mean? It mean that God's moral law shows us that holiness is, praise God, walking in obedience to God's moral law, just like Christ did. Just like Christ did. Yes, he did. Praise God. And this he did because what? Because he is holy. He lived it because he is holy. He didn't live it to get holy. He lived it because he is holy. Huh? Hebrews 7, 26. Hebrews 7, 26 says, For such an high priest became us, who is holy, humbly, undefiled. He's separate from sinners. He's made higher than the heaven. That's our great high priest. That's our Lord. Praise God. That is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But now, again, I, I, I want to make this plain. I've said it in, I think, in most all our messages. We do not obey God's moral laws to become holy. No, 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 no. But we obey them because we have been made holy. We're first made holy. And then we all go through the process of sanctification, of becoming every day closer to Christ, more in the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise God. And because we are holy, we live a separate life from sin. We, we, we also call out from a hobnob and we're sinners like we used to. Except maybe when we're led by the Spirit of God. Christ was led by the Spirit of God. He went into the sinner's headquarters, sat down at the table, and ate with them and supped with them. But now he had a message for them. Praise God. So now we can go among them, but do you have a message? Huh? Do your life say something? Uh, or do you have an, a, a, a word of encouragement, a word of salvation for these people? Otherwise, you have no business being right there with them. Not whatsoever. Now, that's what my Bible tells me, because I know a lot of you say you got a different interpretation. And that's your right. That's your right. That's your right. Now, but now as a believer is being conformed to Christ, uh, he or she uh, put forth, uh, should put forth great efforts to obey God's word. Amen. As we've been conformed, we ought to put forth great efforts to obey God's word. 
Praise God. See, the wise man Solomon, uh, he closes out his book there with these kind of instructions in Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the last chapter 12, and then verse 13, he said, let us hear, let us hear, he says here, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Mm, the whole duty. Keep his commandments. Fear God. Praise God. Now, how many do you, how many remember? Do you remember now? Listen to me now. When there was the campaign throughout this United States and probably other parts of the world too, praise God, to remove all God's commandments, all God's moral laws, praise God, wherever they were on government property for sure, remove those. Mm -hmm. Remove those moral laws, those commandments. Get rid of them. Take them away. Well, what were they, praise God, what were they actually doing in doing that? Well, removing from our culture all consciousness of good and evil, right and wrong. They didn't want it. Hmm? That's right. That which is not permitted and that which is forbidden in God's word as is stated in the, in the Bible there, God's moral laws and his commandments. Praise God. They want to get rid of that. Hmm? Praise God, they felt that they were barriers to them living the way they want to live. Fences to keep them from just having all, all, all out Donnybrook, more or less. Amen. Praise God. But now God gave these moral laws to us for our safety, though. For our well-being. Actually, that's what he... Uh, see, the prohibition that's in God's moral laws, in these commandments, protect us from one another. Yes. Hmm? That untamed beast... That's within all of us. And I know some of you bougies, you know, you don't want to hear that. You, you're dignified, but now you're a beast. That's what the Bible says. We all have sinned and we'll come short of the glory of God. So there's a beast in all of us. And God put up barriers, moral laws for us to protect us from one another. Now they remove them out of the school, out of the government. And what do we have today? What do we have today? Hmm? Luke 19 and 14, Jesus says here, but his citizens hated him hmm? and sent a message to him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. That's what this country is saying. That's what the world most basically said. We don't want him. We don't want Christ reigning over us. Praise God. We'll rather have confusion. Well, that's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to get. Confusion and more confusion. You don't push away the help. The only help that can really help us in this situation, you push him away. Praise God. This world hates God. This world hates God. This world hates God's law. Praise God. Hurt God. Hurt, hate God's word. <laughs> Therefore, that's why Christ tells us, love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, love the Father is not in him. Don't love him. Praise God. And as far as praying, for the, this evil world. A lot of people, that's, I hear people say all the time, pray for the world, pray for the world. What well, Christ said, I pray not for the world. That's what he said in, verse, in John 17. I don't pray for the world. Why? Because it has rejected him. It has rejected Christ. It has rejected his word, right? The only help that we have, the only source of healing that we have is in Christ's word. Hmm? In those moral laws, in those commandments that we were removed from, from our, 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 our government lands and, and from he's trying to de erase them off of the, 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 the ingrained, when they ingrained in the monuments inside the building, they want to erase them. Don't want no God. And the sad thing about it is that church folks go along with it. But now, I'm not surprised because, I, I, like I said, church folks is the one gave Jesus the fit. Hmm? Church folks gave Moses the fit. And church folks are the one that opposes Christ and Christians today under the sky that I'm a Christian. Yes, I'm a Christian, but I just don't believe like that. Hmm? Jesus said, pray not for the world, neither the things that are in the world, because they rejected Christ. So let us pray for the souls that are in the world. That's what I pray. I pray for souls in the world, especially those whom God have predestined to be saved. I pray that I might be used of God to bring you cross into the family of God. Hmm? But not for the world. It ain't going to get no better. The world ain't supposed to get no better. Huh? Praise God. You rejected Christ. Can, can, can I build a house? Can I build a house that's going to stand while at the same time I'm trying to build it somebody else's? Praise God. Removing the foundation at the same time. Can, can that work out? Hmm? 
Praise God. We got the devil trying to tear down what God's trying to do in this world today. Praise God. But now, if we don't accept Christ as Savior, things can and things will never get better. You can take that to the bank. Never get better. But now, when we are saved, though, praise God, God's law, God's holy image, when we're saved, is restored in us. Yes, that law is rewritten in our heart as it was written at first in the heart of Adam. Praise God. And as we obey God's word, the image of Christ is formed in us more and more. And Paul, is like, Paul says, like, we go from glory to glory. Praise God. I love that. Praise God. Christ is our lawgiver. He's a lawgiver as well as our law fulfiller. Amen. Christ is the very embodiment. Of God's word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word, praise God, is God. But the world rejects the word. Mm, written word, rainbow word, word. The word that was made flesh. Praise God. But to love Christ is to love his word. Mm? In these last days, God has given to us two things. Two things. He's given us his moral law. Mm? And he has given us the living model of his law, the living model, someone that modeled and kept that law very perfectly. Praise God. He gave it to Christ. Christ, Christ illustrated it. Praise God. Amen. But now Romans 8, if you look at Romans 8 there, 8 and 3, it said what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent his own son in the likeness of sin to the flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but who walk after the spirit. Hmm. Paul said that now, although God's moral law is perfect, God's commandment is perfect, his Christ was perfect, man was unable to keep this law, to obey this law, because there was a weakness in man's flesh, in that sinful flesh of man. So what did the Lord do? He said God sent his son in the flesh, in a body, who perfectly obeyed God's moral law. And through our faith in Christ, his perfect obedience is accredited to us. Put it on my account. God put it on my own book on my account. Christ did it for him. Why? Because I trust in him. Praise God. I believe in him. I thank God that I've been chosen. I've been saved by the power of God. Now, Psalm 91, we're just about through here. Psalms 91 and 1. We know that, don't we? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Secret place. And then Ezekiel eleven sixteen. write it down if you can't keep up there. He says, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, God talking about his people, I cast them way off. I have scattered them among the countries, he says, yet will I be to them a little sanctuary, a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall go. Mm -hmm. But now John 10 and 9, let's put all that together and we'll work it out. He, Christ said, I am the dope. John 10, 9. By me of any man here in, he shall be saved and go in and go out and find pasture. Mm -hmm. That's what the word of God said. Go in and out and find pasture. Now, in this evil world, God's people spiritually lives in a secret place. Mm -hmm. Our life is hid with God in Christ, the Bible said. We live in a secret place. A little sanctuary is what he called it here. But now we are allowed to go in and go out. Go in and go out hmm, into this wicked world to do the work of him that sent us. But now we actually live in that sanctuary. I live in that secret place. But I have to go out. I have to go out. I got a mission. I got a work to do here. But to you who are still not sure that you are saved today, Hmm? If you're not sure, you who uh, say, I hope so, I hope so, I hope I, I hope I get in. Well, let me assure you that, praise God, if you're truly saved today, if you're truly saved today, you were at some time or another taken, ushered into God's secret place. Yes, you was. God's little sanctuary. At one time, you was ushered in there where the eyes of the world were forbidden to enter. No eyes could enter there. You were taken in God's secret place, God's little sanctuary. Praise God. Amen. And I thank God that uh, 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 something happened to us that made us a different person. Oh, when we entered into his secret place, that is, that, that, that into the living God, something happened to us. Amen. Something, oh, my eyes was open. My eyes was open. My heart was touched. Amen. 
praise God, brought to a reality that we, oh boy, I never knew before. I, I, I mean, it's hard to explain it. Praise God. We were brought into that secret place, that little sanctuary hmm? in Christ, hidden in Christ, where the living God, the holy living God is. His name is Jesus. If you are truly saved, you have experienced this. And I'm going to tell you something. It's an experience that you'll never forget. Hmm? Into that secret place where no eyes can see, no man can enter. Hmm? But thank God he lets us go in and out. I brought you in that I might bring you out. He lets us go in and out. Praise God to do this work that he called us to do. Hmm? See, the, the holiness of our God is a subject that has no end. There's no end to it. Amen. And 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 I thank God though for this opportunity that He's given me. See, and I thank God for He 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 has opened the portals of heaven and allowed me to peep in there. Praise, come in, peep in, glean just a little bit of God's wisdom and knowledge concerning this subject of holiness. Praise God. I don't even propose to think that I've touched. I, I've just skimmed this subject. There's so much here. But now, as we close today. Praise God. As we, as we close out right now, God wants you to know that he says, I want you to be holy. Hmm? And it begins with you repenting of your sins. That's where it starts at. Repenting of your sins. Praise God. Asking the Lord to forgive you of your sin. It starts right there. And asking the Lord to make His sanctuary, make a sanctuary uh, in, he, in your heart. Bring his sanctuary into your heart. Praise God. Will you do that today? Amen. Will you do that today? For the Bible says here that today is the day of salvation. Today, praise God, tomorrow is not promised. Well, matter of fact, the next hour is not promised to you. Today is the day of salvation. You have only this moment, this hour right now. And I beg of you to ask God for his forgiveness. Seek his forgiveness. And Lord, praise God, let him take you into that little sanctuary, to that secret place. Praise God and allow you to go in and out, but never from his presence. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, we bless you today. I thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity. Lord, just to share your word today. Lord, I do pray in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, Lord, that your spirit, by your spirit, Lord, you move upon the hearts of your people, that particular person that you have drawn to this broadcast. Lord, I know that you're speaking to that person right now. I pray the Holy Spirit, give him power, give her power right now, Lord, to come to you right now, to ask forgiveness right now, and to be ushered into your presence. Lord, I ask it all in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen, and praise God. My brothers and sisters, if you like this video, go over and hit that like button over there and then go back and hit the subscribe button. And when I come again, and if God allow me to live and go in and out, I will come back again. I bring you another word and you'll be notified immediately. You'll be notified and praise God. You can put your foot, foot up to God's table and praise God. You can eat till you can eat no more. Praise God. But until that time, may God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. God bless you. Love you.